So, council member comments, questions, directions following public communication. Council member uh, Strube. Oh, first to Mr. Hendricks, I, I didn't call you because I don't have your number. Did you leave it with somebody here or maybe could you call me? Thank you. I'll do that. And I, missed, uh, Mr. Gibbs. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Bishop. Thank you for putting us on notice. I look forward to seeing much more of you in the future. And I think most everybody else was here to talk about busking, and I want to thank you for everything that you brought to our attention. I especially want to thank Brittany, who um, just seems to exude peace, and I really appreciated that. I want you to know I was, I was feeling it. Okay, so, and, and James, I saw how difficult it was for you to be up there, and I admire you for working through it. I, I really, the first time you do that, it's tough. I hope we'll see you again. And so now to everybody, I, I'm a little confused about this issue. I, it, it, it seems a little bit we're talking past each other. I, I hear people say that they're, that they got some harassment, but I've also heard uh, people say that the police are not enforcing the busking ordinance. Uh, we had gentlemen Select, very selectively. selectively enforcing it. The other thing I'm not sure of is, is why we even have certain areas where you're allowed to busk and other areas where you're not allowed to busk, and I'll, I'll be asking staff. Oh, you know, it's time for a pop quiz. You can give me, I, I think you might have been, you might be ready for this because you, you, you knew this was coming. But I, I, I will ask for just a brief history on why we even have these restrictions because they existed before I got here. So there must have been a reason they were put in place. I, I want you to know that I hear a lot from other citizens who aren't here this evening. Uh, there's quite a lot of email that's come over the last couple of weeks while we were on vacation. And, uh, and I'm out talking to voters a lot now. And the overwhelming concern seems to be for downtown. The thing we all agree on is that we love downtown and we want it to be special. But I hear a lot from people who say that they're not safe downtown, that they don't want to come downtown anymore because they've been harassed, they've been chased, they've been knocked down in some cases. Stories I've never heard about in downtown Olympia before. None of them ever said some person was playing music and I didn't like it. So it's not the people who are pressuring the city council to create more, to, to provide better enforcement downtown aren't complaining about busking. And I'm not sure why buskers would feel harassed or, or be, be harassed. I certainly don't want that to happen. And I, I think maybe we need to do something a little more formal to follow up on this. I don't I'll ask my colleagues, I don't know if a committee referral is in order to spend some more time conversing about this. It seems to me we're not, I'm not real clear on what the problem is exactly. I, I hear sort of vague, I got harassed, but I, I would need more information about where you were and what you were doing and what was going on exactly, because at, from here, I can only set policy. I can't go to the police chief and say, you will do this or you will do that. that is the responsibility of the city manager. We'll and if, excuse me? We'll <clears throat> okay, so what I, need is, what I need is information about whether a policy needs to be changed. And some of you did say that you would like the restrictions lifted so people could busk anywhere. So that, that's a policy change that I can look at. And now I'm gonna ask the city manager, can you tell me why we have restrictions on busking? Good question. Uh, sure. The, uh, let me give you a little background. So the uh, city council in 2007 
passed a busking ordinance, and the purpose was not to restrict music. The purpose was to balance interest in the downtown. So you have people who just want to walk down the sidewalk. You have people who want to run a shop or a restaurant. You have people who want to perform music and other things. And so the busking ordinance tried to balance that, and it said, in any event, you can't block people from walking. So the busking ordinance is enforced, particularly when someone might be standing in the middle of the sidewalk and people feel like they have to go around them or through them to do their. So you can't block people trying to walk. It also uh, disallows people from blocking access to a shop or a restaurant. So those people who are down there to make a living can also make a living. And so the council said you have to leave a free space open for walking and for entering businesses. And there are certain zones where you can just busk your, your heart away and there's no permit, no permission at all. And, and I'll say right now, there are probably too few of those. When the council, uh, this came to the council a few weeks ago, you said that too. So we're looking at adding more busking zones where you can just busk. But then in places that are in front of shops or restaurants, the ordinance says there has to be permission from the from the owner to have somebody right in front of their business so that they feel like there's a partnership, so that there's no fee for that ordinance. Uh, you can go to the Parks Department, and you can actually now get an application here and get one. So there's agreement between a musician and a shop or a restaurant that there's going to be someone there. So it's not just a free-for-all, and they can still conduct a business. So that was the intent to balance downtown interest. But I'll say two things are clear. One is that there, there probably need to be more just free busking zones. And second, we're working at the staff level to develop a little brochure called The Basics of Busking, so everybody understands what can and can't be done, uh, business owners, buskers, police officers, so everybody knows what the rules are. So we're working on that as well. So those are two initiatives that we felt like we got direction from council last time some of these folks are here to work on, and we are. OK. So ordinarily, the, our, our way of doing business is at the end, at the very end of our meeting, we do reports and we ask for referrals. And I, uh, I'm going to violate our protocol right now because so many people are here. I'm going to ask my colleagues if we could please refer this for further investigation. I think our busking rules need adjusting. And I probably... I'm looking, I'm looking at the chair of the Land Use Committee and the General Government Committee. I'm not sure where this belongs. Well, I'm not sure either. Um, I think that uh, I would be happy to take it on if, if that is the best place. Or I'd, and I'm on General Government, too, so I'm happy to take I, it on there as well. I'd rather so. like busking myself. I'd be happy to take it on. It doesn't matter okay. to me. Okay. okay. It's, so, it's yours, then. We, we have a full place. So. so I'll ask for a referral to General Government, then. So I have a question for the city manager before we make the referral. Currently, the ordinance allows uh, administrative decision and rulemaking around some of the zoning issues. Um, and, and you already articulated that, that you, perhaps there's a way for us to expand the, 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 the busking zone. Um, and, and so you acknowledge that there is um, that ability for you to, mm -hmm. to make some of those policy changes, correct? Correct. So my question for Council Member Strube before we do the referral is, are you looking to amend the ordinance itself, or are you just looking to add additional um, areas that are within the city manager's purview? And th thank you for that clarification. I'm, I'm looking to amend the ordinance because I'm just not convinced that we need to have any restrictions. I'm not sure that... This takes longer if you interrupt. I'm, uh, I'm not sure that the ordinance is doing what council hoped it would do when they passed it in 2007. We, we know from our, from our email and uh, personal conversations with citizens that there's increasing concern about downtown activity, and it's never about busking. It's about people, you know, not people blocking the sidewalk playing an instrument, but people blocking the sidewalk just uh, you know, being misbehaving and, and aggressive and uh, maybe just drinking a beverage. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why this one activity was singled out. It, it must have been because there was some concern at the time, perhaps coming from downtown businesses. But I, but I think it 
uh, it merits a review by council to see if it's doing what we would like it to do. I, I don't think it is. So before we move on with the referral, uh, Councilmember Rowe has expressed an interest in speaking along with Councilmember Adavelli. So Councilmember Rowe, followed by Councilmember Adavelli, and then we'll consider the issue, oh, followed by Councilmember Langer, and then we'll consider the issue of the referral. Councilmember Rowe? Well, now I've kind of lost track of what I was going to say because I had a lot of the same questions and comments as, as Councilmember Stroob. Um, I, for me, it seems like a bit of miscommunication, too. I have to be honest. I'm going to look like I'm really out of it. I'd never heard of busking before you guys started talking about it. And for those of you watching at home, if you don't know what busking is either, um, this is what it is. It's people who want to play on the streets and, and um, make money. And we all love music. I think it's great. In fact, I thought it was kind of fun hearing you guys on the drums out there as we walked in. It was great. But I will say I went on a, a walking tour with uh, Ruthie Snyder and one of our downtown police officers last week. And I wish all of us could have done that because it does answer some of the questions in terms of why the business owners may not want their doorway blocked. And I, I'm not going to give a specific name, but but one of the businesses downtown said they had asked someone to move and and they wouldn't. And um, so I think that's why we have to have some type of rules. But I really liked what Jerry Colvis said. I don't know if he's still in here. Uh, I really liked what you said about putting it, getting permission from the owner and putting it back on on you guys. If you're going to play, you need to get permission from the owner to, to play. Uh, it, I feel like we as a city are getting blamed for something. We have these rules, but you, it kind of came up out of nowhere that suddenly we have an issue with busking. I go downtown every single day, almost, and I don't see anybody busking. So I don't know where you are, but I'd like to hear more busking. And if, if we can come up with a way... I mean, seriously, music is music is music is very fun, and I, and I appreciate it. So I think I'm not sure if we really need a referral because I know Ruthie Snyder has been working on it and staff uh, to come up with other areas, and we did look at other areas, and I'm not sure how far that's gotten, but uh, okay. Thanks. But anyway, pardon me. <coughs> I, no, we saw the, I had the map, yes. We were looking at other areas to add. So the map will be one of the considerations. So Councilmember Adevelli, you had comments? Oh, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks to everybody for a respectful dialogue. It always helps uh, when we have a chance to communicate in both directions. Uh, it makes a big difference, uh, and I I think Councilmember Strew made a comment earlier too, so I appreciate that. Um, I, with regard to the referral, I initially was thinking that this made sense at general government, but I'm hearing uh, additional layers of complexity and land use issues that are surfacing here, and I'm thinking that perhaps this does belong with the work that the Land Use and Environment Committee is doing, looking at our downtown more holistically. Um, specifically, I'm not sure if the Land Use and Environment Committee might um, seek to further refer it to um, uh, the Planning Commission where a public hearing could take place. Uh, there are clearly lots of folks with a lot of interest and a lot of expertise to bring to the table and a lot of experiences and opinions and perhaps um, our Planning Commission could provide a forum for taking that kind of more substantive input, um, whereas I'm not sure that at general government we would be able to drill down to that level. So I would recommend a referral to uh, land use where you can bundle it up with the work that you've already begun. Okay. Council Member Langer. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, first of all, um, I'm not sure why people are thinking that we're the enemy or that we're somehow adversaries in terms of busking. I really agree with what uh, Councilmember Rose said about that, you know, that we haven't heard complaints about busking. We don't see a problem with busking. Frankly, I like, I like busking, if you will. I don't have any beef with busking. 
Okay, and so I, I'm a little troubled when you come here sort of assuming that we're the enemy, that somehow we're trying to, you know, uh, uh, subvert and destroy something here in Olympia when in fact we're, we're not looking at that at all. In fact, uh, certainly what uh, we're doing in my committee in Land Use and Environment Committee meeting, and those of you who've come to those meetings I think probably have a sense of that, is that it's our, uh, our intent to have everybody working together to make downtown better and making sure that people are, feel safe and feel welcome to come downtown. And so uh, if you're going to be a part of that, we want you at those meetings. We want you to come and tell us what you want. But don't assume that we're the enemy. Assume that we're willing to work with you and want good things to happen downtown. And I think of busking as a good thing to happen downtown. So that said, I'd be happy to take uh, the referral, um, and then we'll have to look and discuss it in committee about uh, sending it to planning to make sure that, you know, if, if that makes sense in terms of changes that are necessary. So please don't see us as the enemy. Just talk to us, and, and we'll be happy to work with you, because I think we're, as, as long as you're all on board with trying to make downtown better, and uh, that's... Uh, I think that's where we all should be. Thank you. So I'm sensing concurrence that we refer the matter to the Land Use and Environment Committee with the specific uh, a task of uh, reviewing uh, the current busking zoning operations as well as the possibility of repealing, amending, or retaining the current busking zoning and ordinance. Okay? So it's pretty open in terms of... Uh, operations and how it's been implemented and then possible changes to the zone. Does that provide enough clarity for staff as well as to the uh, Land Use and Environment Commission or committee? Okay. We're good. Any other comments on this matter? Okay. So, again, we still have uh, ten individuals that had signed up for public communication under agenda item number seven. So when we're finished with the other three items, if uh, you still decide to... Uh, Mary's waving because my mic wasn't on. Blah, 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 blah. Could you say that again, please? That was the most profound thing you said. You got that verbatim? That's very good. It, okay. You really don't want me to say that all over again, do you? Okay. So with that, we'll move on to item number four, which is the consent calendar. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. It's been moved Second. by Mayor Pro Tem Buxbaum, seconded by Councilmember Langer to approve the consent calendar. Are there any questions, comments, or pulls from the consent calendar? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. That brings us now to agenda item number five which is a hearing for the parties of record uh, regarding the Village at Mill Pond Master Plan development. And with that, I have a script to read for us since this is a hearing. Um, uh, agenda item five concerns the council's review of a recommendation to a hearings examiner and the de design review board on the Village at Mill Pond Master Plan application, file number 10-0126 which are amendments to a master plan formerly known as the uh, Barton Village. The rec recommendation from the hearings examiner uh, that council is reviewing is limited to the proposed amendments to the master plan. The hearing examiner's recommendation includes findings, of con uh, findings and conclusions, and the council's review of this matter includes review of those findings and conclusions to determine whether they will be adopted by the council. Per section 18.57.080, subsection D of the Olympia Municipal Code, the Council has a number of options, including adopting, modifying, or, and rejecting some or all of the hearings examiner and the design review board recommendations. The Council may also remand the matter back to the hearings examiner. 
and then without formal decision to do so, and then has been made at this point, the council cannot accept new evidence or hear arguments that are not based on the facts in the record. So all participants this evening are asked to keep that in mind as we proceed. Uh, this is not a typical council item because although we are elected officials, our role in this matter in the review of the village at Mill Pond uh, project is quasi-judicial. In other words, we must act as judges and not in our legislative capacity uh, in deciding what should be done. Therefore, there can be no lobbying of council members on this particular action. Another aspect of the council's role as judges or in the quasi-judicial matter is that the Washington Appearance of Fairness Law applies. It requires that we ask council members to, to disclose if they have had any, uh, if they have any property or financial interest that would be affected by denying or approving the village at Mill Pond Master Plan application, and as well as whether or not they have had any off the record or ex parte communications concerning the village at Mill Pond application while this matter has been before the council. In addition, we also ask that you disclose whether or not you, there's any reason why you cannot uh, consider the uh, application in a fair and objective manner. Uh, I'd like to note that uh, this uh, particular matter has come before the Council effective June 10th, 2011, so you'd need to disclose any ex parte communication occurring between that period and this evening. So at this point in time, I'd like to ask the Council if they have any disclosures that need to be made. Seeing no disclosures, now I'll ask the participants in this matter if they uh, would like to address anything raised by the disclosures, of which there were none, as well as ask if anyone present wishes to challenge the, um, or raise a challenge based on the Washington Appearance of Fairness Law. Okay. So with regards to the process this evening, uh, as has already been explained as, as well as it's in the staff report, council's review is limited to the record that has already been established and thus presentations to the council should be limited to the record. Uh, this evening as we go through the process, council members may ask questions of presenters at the close of his or her presentation. In presiding, I may give other parties a chance to comment on such questions as well, uh, uh, as well outside of their initial time allotments. Uh, I'd like to note, again, that there is no uh, general public comment or uh, audience participation in this matter, since it is uh, closed and limited to the record. At the Council's uh, July 26, 2011 meeting, uh, we decided to review the village at Mill Pond Matter in a fashion that is consistent with the, uh, the process that the Council used, has used in the past for such similar reviews. So according to uh, uh, prior process, uh, the proceedings will uh, occur as followed this evening. City staff will provide uh, background information and be granted five minutes to do so. The applicant will have up to 15 minutes to ad uh, advocate and explain uh, the project as well as the changes since this is a, an amendment to a previously adopted master plan. And then the other presenters will have up to five minutes unless otherwise requested and granted this evening. And then we'll call you up, uh, the other presenters, in the order in which you have signed up to speak. And we notice that there's only one presenter uh, this evening to sign up in addition to the applicant. And then finally, the applicant will have 10 minutes to respond to the issues raised by the presenters. Uh, and with that, I'll ask Council if there are any questions regarding the process and or what is asked of Council this evening. Seeing none, we'll proceed with the, uh, the hearing and as well as we'll start off with the staff presentation. So who from staff is presiding, pro providing us with the staff presentation? Okay, you can come to the podium and introduce yourself and get us going here, please. You have five minutes. My name is Craig Chalm, an associate planner with Community Planning and Development for the City of Olympia. Uh, this evening is for the village at Mill Pond. Uh, which was um, made an application in August of 2004 and it is located on 26th Avenue at the 2400 block of Lily Road. It's parallel by uh, the Western Shales Trail to the east, 26th Avenue to the north. Beyond that to the north is the urban growth area, Lily Road uh, to the west and Surrey Street which is primarily developed as residential to the south. Uh, the surrounding area uh, beyond that to the east, west, and north is um, uh, much of the land is undeveloped land. The proposal is for a 300 residential unit subdivision with 122 single family detached housing units, uh, 88 townhouses, 90 multifamily, 
and a commercial element with over 12,000 square feet, and the project would also include a community clubhouse of approximately 9,000 square feet. Uh, the project differs from the Briarton Village as it has more linear, less curvy linear streets within it, has more connections to the Western Chehalis Trail uh, and to the perimeter uh, arterial streets. Uh, to give a brief uh, background on the project itself with some details to date, on July 17th, uh, uh, to, well, it has gone through the process once before, as I said, as Briarton Village. It went through uh, Design Review Board, went through a hearing examiner, and actually came to the City Council, and the City Council issued a, uh, an approval, and then there were modifications that were made, and then the project was uh, resubmitted under a modified application in, uh, I believe it was uh, November of this year. Now, in July 17th of 2007, a CEPA mitigation determination on uh, significance was issued, and that, that was amended in December 24th of that same year. On February 5th of 2008, a public hearing conducted by the hearing examiner recommended master approval, and then on March 11th, 2008, the council approved the Briarton Village Master Plan uh, with concepts and directions in preparation of an ordinance with certain revisions. Um, Let's see, and then as I said, November 10, 2010, the modified master plan and preliminary subdivision application were submitted. And in December 9, 2010, Design Review Board uh, reviewed the project and recommended approval. On May 19th, an addendum to the amended CEPA determination was issued. And then it uh, proceeded to the hearing examiner who recommended approval um, on June 10, 2011. And that was a public hearing. And at the July 26, 2011 meeting, as I believe that you already, uh, Mr. Mayor, recapped, uh, the City Council uh, gave consideration to the master plan and, uh, and decided to utilize the process consistent with the prior procedures of the Council review and the hearing examiner's recommendation. Uh, the rest of you pretty much already went over for me. Thank you very much. The applicant's representative is here, Ron Thomas, who would be more than happy to uh, answer or give further details to the project. I'm available for any questions that you may have. Great. So, any questions for staff? Councilmember Rowe, followed by Councilmember Strew. I, I just have a question. Is there any way for people watching at home if we can get this on the uh, overhead or? the layout of it. I just thought it might be helpful if it shows we have a lot of illustrations and things that those at home aren't able to see might help. All right. Okay. That was it. Council